please like and comment on the video below. That will allow me to produce better quality videos and more of them in the future. So if you want to uh, trade tennis, it's important to understand like the flow uh, that you'll see within a market. So if, uh, and what I mean by the flow is what you're about to see here. So can you see there's money stacked up on either side of this? So people who are court siding or doing something um, at the match will have some sort of an advantage, will stack up money. Can, I, can you see how it disappeared there? So that means that Ostapenko has just won that particular point. Now the market will go calm for a while. We could put a position into the market here if we feel comfortable doing that because it's trading 165, 166. But as soon as the server steps up to hit that ball, the money will vanish and then you'll see the money get taken from one direction or the other. So the ball's in play and then whoop, you can see Ostapenko has uh, got that point there. So if you're actively going to uh, trade within a match, the best thing to do is to wait for a gap just immediately after a point and you're watching like a live streaming feed or something like that because that will be the point at which you can enter the market without any fear of somebody taking out the price above or below the current level. Um, now typically it would be even better if you do that at the end of each game because obviously there's a huge break at the end of each game and you can do that without any fear of money going. So you can, you can see the server starts and then the money evacuates on one side and then you can see that uh, that tells you where that particular point has gone. It's being challenged at the moment so can you see there there was a bit of doubt and uncertainty and it's gone against Ostapenko. So the price moves up. But can you see how this is occurring? And now they're going back to serve again. The market repopulates because there's no risk in the market. And you can take your position at 164, 165. But also, look over here. Can you see there's so little money on the opposing player? There's, uh, there's, there's nothing there. And that is because all of the money gets traded on the shorter price player. There's only two players within a tennis match. Well, within a, a singles match, obviously. And therefore, what you will find is that it's all of the shorter price that attracts the money because the shorter price is just the inverse of the bigger price of the other player. You know, if this player wins, that one can't win. And if this one wins, that can't win. So the money gravitates to the shorter priced player. Uh, that's just the way that tennis works. So if Ostapenko gets into trouble here, then it's not impossible that um, the uh, Bazinski will be the shorter priced player and then all the money will appear on this side. So it's important to understand that as well. You may find yourself flopping between two players when you're actively trading. Now, um, one other thing to show you as well is if I go up to the settings area on Bet Angel, if you go to display, there's a thing called a virtual bet display. And what this is doing is basically um, creating, uh, it's cross matching, it's creating a virtual bet on the other side. So if you back at 165 on here, it can put a lay bet in on this side that's the equal and opposite of that. Or if you back over here, it will put a lay bet that's the equal and opposite on that side. The best way to experience that is to switch it off. So we'll wait for the market to um, stabilize a bit here. I'm having a bit of a battle here in this game. And then if I um, switch this off, you see what happens. Can you see the money vanishes over here? And then if I put it back, it reappears. Gone, reappears, gone reappears. So what you're seeing is the reciprocal amount that there's money staked over here when cross matching is on, when the virtual bet display is on, it appears on this side. When it's off, you don't see it. It doesn't exist. It's not there. Um, so this is important to understand and this is another reason why it's important to trade on the shorter price. It's possible that there may be a better price over here, but um, cross matching makes sure that they're always in equilibrium. Um, but in fact, most of the real money, the money that traders are putting down, is always going to be on the shorter price. Anyway, hope that's been helpful for you. So we are just at a change of ends uh, within the market, and you'll see um, how this behaves. You'll see that there's nothing sort of weird going on here, and that in fact the market's pretty quiet. You can see there's money going in at 155, 156, and so on and so forth. We, if we look at the virtual bets, it's a bit easier to look at the virtual bets because the market isn't moving at this particular moment in time. But can you see um, during a change of ends there is really uh, very little activity. If we wanted to back all lay at either of these prices uh, we can do so with ease and there's no particular risk to our trade suddenly going against us uh, simply because somebody has faster pitches. So if you want the lowest risk to get in and out of a tennis trade it will be in between games. 
um, but if you've got adequate time during a slow serve, uh, Nadal's a notoriously slow uh, server, then you've got opportunities there. But uh, again, this is just to point out to you sort of general market behavior to aid you when you are likely to get in or out of a particular trade.